Basic principles of release from a hold from behind. What's happening? When you're held from behind, it's different. We'll take an average situation and an average pulling force. There are two bodies here. He holds me a little and tries to throttle me. He blocks the axis of oxygen to my lungs and blood circulation. He's trying to suffocate me. In order to avoid this or to save time, we're trying to place his elbow so that one of your arteries was here and the second arm was free too. Turn the Adam's apple to the elbow joint. He blocks everything here and I put my chin on this lever with regard to the support point. It's a person, I mean, it's his spine. His weight is directed on this lever we see that it's behind the bearing area. That means that we can use the force against the lever. That's what we have. We sit down. But don't press his arm until you slide. But sit down and try to move his arm down too. As we are on the limits of the supporting point, to be more precisely, on the boundary, and his supporting leg, it is also here. It would be difficult for us to do that though we have the lever. We see it here. What else can we do? Look at his upper arm and forearm. When I pull him here, the vector of the forearm goes to the side. The vector of the upper arm goes to the front. I press him to that side, then pull a stick and he falls. Did you see that? The weight of his body tends to the ground. And it's combined with his weight too. As I've already said, we have to turn the elbow to reduce the force of the throttling. You can bend a little too. Use the movements, but watch all the vectors in all directions. These vectors do the work, but not in the way we discussed. The same here. He holds me. You can grip him on his clothes. What's the most comfortable for you? You can act with a second arm. You do everything that we've seen. Now I move my leg and add overturning to all my holds. Now you don't see these vectors. I explained to you how you should form it in your head so that you can see what you can use. But don't drag it from one side to another. Never do that. That would do harm. I made it to explain how to see how it looks like. I pull into the side and now help myself with my leg. Here is the heel. Let's consider your shoulder. What's its role? It helps to deceive him. He thinks it's a support. You can raise your shoulder, then sit down and pull him aside. That's enough. Don't make him stand on tiptoes. Some think that we have to raise the shoulder and raise it to infinity. If, if you pull him, his upper arm is here. Now use your thigh when you feel that all his weight is on his right leg. The vector of the forearm is here, but I use the vector of the upper arm to overturn him. Try not to keep the shape off your back, as when you perform a throw over your thigh. Never try to pull him like that. Never do that. If he stands there, I should even straighten my back and to sit down. 
so that he slips down from your back and you can't grip it. That's what many of you do, trying to get under him to overturn him then. If he's on you, and if he's a little bigger, he will press you down. You need to pull him to the side and use this hold to do that.